Hi there, my name is Fraser and I'm a lecturer at Massey University's School of Engineering and Advanced Technology. In this video, I want to show you how you can use CMake to build open source libraries into the outputs that you would use as part of your own programming. The particular library we're going to look at today is called GFLAGS and it's designed to pass command line parameters. Now this would be really useful for our programming when we're using, say, OpenCV because a lot of OpenCV uh, programs are based on console programs. So we could pass in some command lines and then edit what our OpenCV program is doing. So let's look at getting started. Now the first thing we need to do is get the right tools. So I would suggest that you get uh, Git for uh, Windows. So if you just search for Git, the first thing that's going to come up is Git and you can download the uh, latest release from uh, their website. The next tool that we need to use is CMake. So if you just Google for CMake, you'll find that you can download the uh, CMake for your platform. In my case, I would download a uh, Windows 64-bit uh, installer, as I've got Windows uh, 7, uh, which is on a 64-bit uh, machine. Now, I'm assuming that you've downloaded and installed these two tools uh, before progressing. Once you've got them installed, you need to go and look for the GFLAGS library. So let's look for GFLAGS. Now it's the first thing that comes up. So I'm going to click on that. And we see in fact that GFLAGS is a library that implements command line flags processing. So it's the right tool for the job. Now all we need to do is click on clone or download and then copy the uh, repos URL to the clipboard. So once I've got that, I'm just going to minimize this window, and then I need to clone it onto my PC. So I'm going to right click and open up git bash here, and type in git clone, and then paste in that URL we just copied. Push enter, and we're going to clone now from the repo onto our PC. It's not a big repo, so it'll only take a couple of minutes to download. And here it is, it's downloaded. So let's make that go away. If we look within the GFLAGS folder that's just been created, you see that the directory uh, contains all the files that were up on that uh, repo. Now the next tool, uh, job we need to do is uh, run CMake. So if we search for CMake, you'll find that there's a um, console-based approach or a graphical approach. So we're just going to use CMake GUI. Now if you run CMake GUI as an administrator, you'll be able to write outputs from it to directories that would otherwise require administrative uh, permission. So I'm going to right click and run as administrator. Now we need to first tell it where the source code is. So we're going to browse to the desktop and look in our GFLAGS folder and select folder. Now CMake will generate a Visual Studio um, uh, uh, project for us, and it, but it needs to generate that in a particular directory. So what we're going to do is generate it in the um, GFLAGS folder and then a subfolder uh, or subdirectory called build. So I've already got it typed in there, but you could browse and then uh, select any folder you would like. Now if we click configure, it's going to recognize that the folder doesn't actually exist yet and create it. And then ask me what type of compiler I want to use. So if I'm going to target a 64-bit machine, then it would make sense that I use a 64-bit compiler. Though you can change it and set it for any 32-bit uh, machine if you wanted. So we'll put leave it as our Visual Studio uh, 2015 Win64. Click Finish. So what it will do is go and configure the project and uh, give us a couple of options which we can change. Now, I like to build my projects using dynamic link libraries because it means for uh, I'll have a smaller executable, um, though that's not strictly required. If you wanted to create static libraries, then just leave the project as it is and click generate. But if you want to generate DLLs, then use the build shared libs and, uh, checkbox. Click generate. Since this is a small project, it doesn't take long to generate the actual um, Visual Studio projects. No, uh, larger projects will take much longer. If we come to build, you see that it's now been populated with a number of Visual Studio projects. Now, if I want the output of Visual Studio to write to a directory that is um, uh, would require administrative pass uh, protect, uh, permission, then I need to make sure I run Visual Studio as an administrator. 
So if I go start, type in Visual Studio, and right click on it and run as administrator, I'll be able to open that file, open project and solution, and I'm just going to browse to desktop, gflags, build, and I'm going to open up gflags.sln. Now I've got Visual Studio 2017, so that's pretty recent, and so um, the CMake uh, version that I have was built for a Visual Studio 2015. So it's just going to ask if we can update the uh, project, and there's nothing wrong with that, so we're just going to click OK. And you'll see that it changes it from uh, in the Solution Explorer from a 2015 project into a 2017 project. Now. Uh, all that needs to change is the, um, the, the, whether or not we want a debug or a release. And so I'm just going to create a release. Uh, that's, sorry, the solution configurations. And I need to right click on all build and select build. Now, if we look in our output window, we see all the program, uh, the program's just compiling and linking and everything's going uh, okay. And we see that at the output, four have successfully been uh, created. Now, if you get a whole bunch of x86 not targeting x64 or x64 doesn't agree with x86, chances are you're targeting a 64-bit machine with uh, using a 32-bit uh, compiler. So, or the other way around, you've, you've got a 64-bit compiler targeting a 32-bit machine. So it's important that you get the compiler selection right at the beginning of that CMake process. Now that we've built all our projects, all we need to do is then right click on install and click build. And what that will do is copy the outputs of the all build process into the C programs files. Uh, so let's have a look, let's see what we've actually created. Now in the build directory you'll see that we've created a few extra files. Uh, bin, for example, has the dynamic link libraries. lib has the library files. And uh, include has the head of files. Now remember that in the original uh, CMake um, uh, build, we could say the CMake install prefix was C program files gflags. If we browse to C, fingers crossed, we'll find under program files a gflags folder. Uh, there it is, gflags. And if we go into it, we'll find that there's a include directory with the head of files that were generated in our build directory for gflags and the lib file, including both the lib and dynamic link library. Now, now that I have uh, that gflags folder, I can use that in my own um, programs. So what I would do is create a, um, a Visual Studio project, create a property sheet, and then I would say uh, where that um, include directory was, and where the lib directory was, and what uh, lib uh, fol uh, file that I wanted to uh, use and link with. The trick then would also be adding the DLL to the path or otherwise copying the DLL into the uh, output directory of our build process using Visual Studio. But what I'll do is I'll go through that in greater detail uh, in another um, tutorial video. So I hope that's been helpful for you to see what the process is to build a open source uh, library using CMake. If it was helpful, why not share this video, leave some comments, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Cheers.